devotees join with the bhakti vaibhav course for taking advantage of provisions association at the same time we have a humble request that we give preference to the bhakti vaibhav candidates for active participation both in terms of asking questions and answering questions so we request the other devotees to kindly give preference to the bhakti vaibhav candidates for active participation okay thank you very much hari krishna ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರ ಧಾರಿ ಜಯ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರ ಧಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ವ್ರಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ವ್ರಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮೋನತೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನತೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಹದ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹೇ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹೇ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 
ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ವೃಂದಾವನ ಚಂದ್ರ ರಾಧ ವೃಂದಾವನ ಚಂದ್ರ ರಾಧೇ ಜಯ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ ಜಯ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ ಜಯ ಬಾಲದೇವ ಜಯ ಸುಭದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರನಿತ 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 ಜಯ ಗೌರನಿತ ನಿತ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ನಿತಾಯ ಗೌರ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾತ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾತ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾತ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾತ್ ಶೀಲ ಪ್ರೌಪಾದಿ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಯಾಮುದೀರ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಾಶ್ರೇಷು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತಿ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಶಿಕ ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಂದ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಾ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರೋನ್ಮಿಲಿತ ಯೇನ 
तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदाहम ददा स्वादाक वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरन्वैष्ठवांश श्रीरूप साग्रजात सगण रघुनाथन्वी सजीव साइत सवधूत पिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपादगणलिता श्री विशाखाता नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रेषा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातेशिणे नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रेषा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती नीति नामिने श्रीवाषवानवी देवी दयिताय कृपाध कृष्ण संबंध विज्ञान दाइने प्रभव नम मधुर्योज्जल प्रेमाढ़ श्रीगौराकुणाशक्ति विग्रहाय नमोस्तुते नमस्ते गौरवाणी श्रीमूर्त दीनतारिणे रूपागा विरुद्धाप सिद्धांतवांतहारिणे नमो गौरकिशोराय साक्षाद्वैराग्यमूर्त विप्रलंबारसाबोधे आदाबुजाते नम भक्ति विनोदा सच्चिदनंदना गौरशक्तिवरायराय ते गौराविर्भावूमेस्व निर्देष्टा सज्जन प्रिय वैष्णव सार्वभौम श्री जगन्नाथा ते नम वाचाकलूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरत्शय नम पंचतवात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्तावतारम भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते जयता सुरतोर्पंगुर्मंदमतेर्गति मत्सर्वस्वदाबोज राधा मदन मोहनो दिव्य वृंदारण्यकद्रुमाद श्रीमद्रत्नागार सिंहासनस्थ श्रीमद्राधाशीलगोविंद देव प्रष्ट्रालिभि सेव्यम स्मरा श्रीमासरसारंभि वंशीवटतटस्थि कर्षम वेणो स्वनेर्गोपीर्गोपीनाथ श्रीयस्तु नप्तकांचन गौरांगी वृंदवनेश्वरी ऋषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीयद्वैतागदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सो हैप्पी टू कम आउट ऑफ टेम्पल एंड गो टू अदर टेम्पल सो भक्ति वैभव इज गोइंग ऑन एंड वी आर डन टिल द सेकेंड कैंट ऑफ फिफ्थ चैप्टर एंड वी आर डिस्कस्ड ड्यूरिंग द लॉकडाउन ऑन जूम इट वॉज द फिफ्थ विथ चैप्टर्स इट वॉज fourth and fifth chapter fourth fifth sixth chapters <laughs> three chapters we had in the first canto so that was uh, uh, narad vyas samvad now it is brahma narad samvad and at the end of this canto second canto you have krishna brahma samvad 
So if you see the parampara, you have Krishna speaking to Brahma, Brahma speaking to Narada, Narada to Vyasa, isn't it? So it's in the reverse order now. <laughs> so this shows that chronology, chronology has nothing to do with, it has no much significance when it comes to Puranas. Whereas the modern historians, so they go by chronology. Chronology makes plays an important role in their, in their historical evidence, collection of facts, archaeology. Uh, so, but the Puranas, chronology is not a big thing for them. Which happened first, what happened later, all this is it's insignificant. Of course, Puranas talk about it, but that is not a major uh, uh, major research factor. Major thing is the knowledge. <clears throat> uh, otherwise, if it comes to chronology, how Krishna gave the knowledge to Brahma, then Brahma gave to Narada, Narada gave to Vyasa, it should be like that. But if you see in the first canto, you have <clears throat> uh, first Narada Vyasa Samvad, and then in the second canto, three chapters, the fifth, sixth, and seventh, three chapters. Uh, is Brahma Narada Samvad. And in the ninth chapter, second canto, second canto, ninth chapter, we have uh, Krishna speaking to Brahma. It's very interesting to know this. The avataran of Srimad Bhagavatam, that is the descent of Srimad Bhagavatam, appearance of Srimad Bhagavatam. Appearance of Krishna and appearance of Bhagavatam, both same. Because Bhagavatam is Krishna and the the Janmashmi, what you celebrate, is the appearance of Krishna. In the same way, appearance of Bhagavatam is having the same significance in the discussion about the appearance of Bhagavatam, appearance of Krishna. Actually, <clears throat> appearance of Bhagavatam, discussion about it more important than appearance of Krishna because appearance of Krishna is presented in Bhagavatam. <laughs> if you discuss about the appearance of Bhagavatam, then appearance of Krishna is natural, is very interesting. You can understand or you can relish the appearance of Krishna. So there are many, many different ways Bhagavatam has appeared in this planet. On the Bhagavat Parampara, there are many, many different ways of his appearance. If you go to the third canto, in the seventh chapter, eighth chapter, in the uh, Vidura Maitre Samvad, Maitreya gives a different parampara altogether from four, four Kumaras, <laughs> isn't it? So, this Bhagavatam is everywhere, all-pervading. So, you cannot just say, this is how it is and nothing else. <laughs> it is, uh, since it is all-pervading, it manifests from different rishis. And also, uh, in one of the scriptures, it is said that, uh, uh, Jaimni says this thing, he says that, without discussion of Bhagavatam, no Veda, no Purana, no other any scripture, even Vyakarana has no value. <laughs> so, Bhagavatam is the soul of all the scriptures. So, of course, Bhagavat Mahima goes unlimited. Our Acharyas have mentioned about the Bhagavat Mahima in different, different places, especially Jiva Goswami. In his Sandarbhas, the whole purpose of writing Sandarbha is that if you uh, know the Sandarbhas, then uh, Bhagavatam is known to you. If you don't know the Sandarbhas, Bhagavatam is unknown to you, in spite of all your hard work. So in the Sandarbhas, what he has basically done is to show that Bhagavatam is actually the soul of all the scriptures, uh, especially in the Tattva Sandarbha. So after speaking this uh, small introduction about Bhagavatam Avataran and it's this thing, let us go to the subject because we just have only four, four, eight days to uh, talk about uh, five chapters, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And in these five chapters, there is Chatushloki Bhagavatam, maybe one full two hours may go in that only. We don't know. <clears throat> and also ten subject matters of Bhagavatam comes in the tenth chapter, in the tenth, tenth chapter. Uh, so that may take a long time. So we'll directly go to the subject matter. We all know where we should, where we are standing, that is Brahmanarat Samvad within that Narada had asked questions to Brahma. We know that. These questions are mentioned in the fifth chapter, uh, second verse. These questions are very...
ತತ್ವಂ ವದ ತತ್ವತಃ ವದ ತತ್ವತಃ ಓ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫಾದರ್ ವದ ತತ್ವತಃ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಇನ್ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಒನ್ ಯದ್ ರೂಪಂ ಯದ್ ರೂಪಂ ಯದ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯದ್ ರೂಪಂ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆರ್ ದ ರೂಪ ಆರ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಸಿ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಸೇ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ರೂಪಂ in sanskrit in a philosophical terminology is not just the form about it you tell about it general thing about it yadrupam that means i want to know about the characteristics etc etc form doesn't mean the form what you understand by form it includes characteristics etc etc yad adishthanam and the second one is i want to know this form is based on what the whole universe is based on what adishtanam because to do something for a object to be placed or do object to do something or object to be placed there should be some some base some, some sthana there should be adhara adhara adishtana both same that is why adhara shakti namaha when you do worship you say adhara shakti namaha first you invoke the adhara shakti and then you can do activities ananta is there holding the entire universe yad rupam yadishthanam yah yatha srishtam yatha srishtam is a very elaborate subject matter you can describe about the characteristics in few words you can talk about uh, this world how it is where it is situated on in few words but <clears throat> yatha srishtam how this world is created so that takes a very long description basically at present that is what is going on how this world has been created so answering the third question of of uh, narada brahma is speaking the current chapter which we are going to discuss that is the fifth sixth chapter but he has already done some part of it that is how the different uh, worlds atala vitala sutala talatala rasatala mahatala patala and the sen upper systems how they are created all we been discussed in the 5th uh, chapter now we are entering into the 6th chapter where shila prabhupada names this as purusha sukta confirmed how purusha sukta has been confirmed in the bhagavatam prayers or in the in the pages of bhagavatam now <clears throat> what is a significance of purusha sukta of course purusha sukta has been described in the previous chapter also some part of purusha sukta brahmano mukam asit pahubhyam kshatra kshatriyas came from the bahus of krishna uh, vaishyas came from the stomach of krishna and uh, the legs shudras came so that has all been discussed in the fifth chapter but there are some other points which are very philosophical and technical of the purush sukta part that has to be explained <clears throat> now why purush sukta has to be explained in the bhagavatam it is because we know the famous verse which talks about the glory of bhagavatam practically every bhakti vaiva student should memorize this verse <clears throat> where the garuda purana says that ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸೂತ್ರ ಭಾಷ್ಯ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅರ್ಥೋಯ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸೂತ್ರ ಅರ್ಥೋಯ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸೂತ್ರ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸೂತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಕಮೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಅರ್ಥೋಯ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸೂತ್ರ ಭಾರತಾರ್ಥ ವಿನಿರ್ಣಯ ಭಾರತ ಅರ್ಥ ವಿನಿರ್ಣಯ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಇಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಗಾಯತ್ರಿ ಭಾಷ್ಯ ರೂಪೋಸೋ this bhagavatam is the bhashya of gayatri and vedartha paribhrimitah the meaning of the vedas have been revealed in shrimad bhagavatam that means without bhagavatam you can understand brahma sutras without studying bhagavatam if somebody studies mahabharat they will be totally confused and we have live examples of it in our society uh, close friends of mine got totally bewildered by studying mahabharata <laughs> they left forgot bhagavatam 
बिकॉज फॉर गेटिंग दिस वर्ड्स भारत अर्थ विनिर्णय हाँ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट श्रीपाद मध्वाचार्य वैल राइटिंग द महाभारत तात्पर्य निर्णय ही सेज वन हू डजेंट स्टडी द भागवतम कैनॉट अंडरस्टैंड महाभारत महाभारत इज द मोस्ट डियर स्क्रिप्चर फॉर द मध्वस फॉर देन दे आर इन टू महाभारत बट इवेन सच ए संप्रदायिक आचार्य मध्वस इज I am writing this Mahabharata Tatpara Nirnaya based on Srimad Bhagavatam. So without Bhagavatam, somebody studies Mahabharata. Maybe if you study Vedanta without studying Bhagavatam, you may at least be a Mayavadi. <laughs> See, Mayavadi is also a Sampradaya. <laughs> Isn't it? That is why Vaishnava Acharya has considered them to be fit rivals. <laughs> See, to be a rival of uh, Vaishnavism is also something. It's not easy. Uh, Lord Ram fought with Ravana, isn't it? So he has something. His Jai Vijay and all these things are there. To be to be rival of a great personality is also big. It's, it's also not a joke. So we say yeah, is all Mayava and all these things. But no, no, no. Mayava is also a sampradaya. They have particular teaching. They have. Uh, compared to them, you know, these Brahma Kumaris and all these people, like see, they they are not fit to be even t- spoken about. They, anybody who has no sampradaya, who has no bhasha, nothing. So, <clears throat> uh, so then Bharata, Mahabharata, and then Bhagavatam, Gayatri Bhasharupo. So, whenever uh, Gayatri mantra is given, it is very famous mantra. We know. The Brahmin initiated devotees, the second initiated devotees, they get this seven in seven Gayatris. The first one, Brahma Gayatri, is very famous Gayatri, and is revered by all the all anybody who is a Hindu has to chant Gayatri, isn't it? Without him, then there is no. He is not called Hindu only. So uh, it is so famous. Just imagine how this one mantra became so famous. Vishwamitra is Rishi. He is a Uh, Surya Narayana is Devata and Vishwamitra is Rishi for this uh, Gayatri. But in the all the four Vaishnava sampradayas, even in the Smartha traditions, they say after chanting Gayatri, you are supposed to chant the first words of Bhagavatam. Very interesting. Many things we don't know. It's a fact. Without chanting the first words of Bhagavatam, Gayatri is of no use. So, though we may say uh, they are Mayavadis or Smarthas or the other sampradayas and all, but in their tradition, with they knowingly or unknowingly, their acharyas, the spriti acharyas, they have inculcated Bhagavatam in them. They have put Bhagavatam into them. Gayatri Bhuvash Bhasharupo. And Vedartha Paribhrimhitaha. Vedartha Paribhrimhitaha means the meaning of the Vedas are being described in the Bhagavatam. Not only just Purusha Sukta, many suktas have been described in the Bhagavatam, directly or indirectly. So any sukta in the Bhagav in in the Vedas have to be described in Bhagavatam. Otherwise, how Vedartha Parivrimata? How does Bhagavatam uh, be called as the describes the meaning of the Vedas? So in the Vedas there are many suktas, but the most prominent is Purusha Sukta. Most prominent, many many suktas there, unlimited suktas are there, uh, but the most prominent is the Purush Sukta, and uh, the Vaishnavas they revere it, the Smartas also they revere it, and most of the Pujaris must be knowing. Anybody who is worshiping Shaligram, they know. Sahasra Sirsha Purusha, Sahasra Aksha, Sahasra Pad, Sabu Mim Mishrato Vrtva Attatishcha Dashangulam Purusha Eveda Gum Sarvam Yad Bhutam Yatcha Bhavyam. So this Purush Sukta has to be described in the Bhagavatam, and is very nicely described in Brahma. And why Purush Sukta became famous? The reason is Brahma describes it to Narada in Bhagavatam, very evidently, very directly. That is the reason Purush Sukta became even more famous. So it is a Bhagavatam which actually makes even the Vedas famous. Not only bring the Subject matter of the Vedas to everyone, but also it makes the Vedic uh, suktas famous. Why other suktas are not very famous? 
because those suktas are not directly described in Srimad Bhagavatam. Of course, Narayana Paraveda, Narayana Paragati, Narayana Paro Dharma, all these things are described. Narayana Sukta is described uh, in that particular verse. So you name a sukta, you will find Bhagavatam. Uh, but specifically, <coughs> this uh, Purus Sukta has been described in two chapters. So let us see how Purush Sukta has been described in these two chapters, especially the sixth chapter. We'll start. So I had a small background. Let us go to the verse. Vacham nirmukam kshetram chandasam saptadhatavaha havyakavyamam ratadhanam jivhas arvarasaya cha So somebody read the translation and then purport. Then I'll give a small... Lord Brahma said, The mouth of the Virat Purusha, the universal form of the Lord, is the generating center of the voice and the controlling deity is fire. His skin and six other layers are the generating centers of the Vedic hymns and his tongue is the productive center of the different footsteps and delicacies for offering to the demigods, the forefathers and the general mass of people. Purport. The opulences of the universal form of the Lord are described herein. So it one is, point here. The opulence means here vibhuti. Hmm? So what is the subject matter here? The vibhuti, vibhuti yoga. But now you have vibhuti yoga in uh, Gita. So here also there is vibhuti. What is the difference? Tricky question. <laughs> Is there any difference? If it is, if there is no difference, no fine. No, we'll go ahead. If there is a difference, then what is the difference? Yeah, just yeah, some, <laughs> some thought. Yes, there is a difference. If you have studied the 11th canto, uh, so 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada mentions this form which Arjuna saw is a material and a temporary universal form. Got it? But what is now being described? Who is being described in this particular chapter? Who is he? At least either Garbodaksha or Karanodaksha, isn't it? Because they are being described very sometimes Karanodaksha, sometimes Garbodaksha Vishnu. And uh, uh, the Purusha Sukta, it may refer to any of the two Vishnus, but primarily to Garbodaksha Vishnu. But if it is describing Garbodaksha Vishnu, there is nothing harm in because they are one and the same personality. Now tell me, the form of Garbodaksha Vishnu or Kshirodaksha Vishnu or Mahavishnu, is it material? You got it, the difference? So there in the 11th chapter, who is being described? Uh, is that material universal form Karodaksha Vishnu, Garbodaksha Vishnu, Kshirodaksha Vishnu? No. So you, you got an idea? That means there are two kinds of universal forms. What are they? One is material, other is spiritual. So what Krishna showed to Arjuna, was it material or spiritual? Now why did Krishna say to Arjuna, I will give you the divyam dadam iti tekshuhu? Okay, difficult question. <laughs> because when Arjuna had spiritual divine eyes, Arjuna had spiritual divine then Krishna taught Arjuna, you cannot see this form which I am going to show to you because that is materially divine. I am going to give you a materially divine eyes. So Krishna gave Arjuna some eyes which were materially divine, which were lesser than what Arjuna had before. Clear? So the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is a very controversial chapter and the Mayavadis like it. And if you don't know this point, one, one sentence, divyam dada that's enough 
to confuse all of you and maybe you may change in your sampradaya also <laughs> after all our education it can happen isn't it so they may clearly if you go by the normal understanding arjuna was seeing krishna so arjuna and krishna told arjuna that i am going to give you divine eyes so what kind of eyes did arjuna had then non divine eyes material eyes if you take the word divine divyam as spiritual uh, and then that means what arjuna had material eyes and with the material eyes what was he seeing krishna krishna he was seeing krishna with the material eyes so what body krishna had over huh isn't it <laughs> all your <laughs> all the verses become secondary because pratyaksh pramana is more important <laughs> the text one is indeed arjuna is seeing and krishna is standing there uh, whatever uh, veda says if it is not confirming with pratyaksha all becomes useless so what am i teaching to you <laughs> my vada <laughs> so that is why we should know that uh, the form which arjuna krishna showed to arjuna is a material universal form it is all time at one time all space at one space so it's very interesting form but it was not interesting to arjuna because he had already sakya rasa shila baladi vidya bhushan prabhu says that it is good <laughs> and just making more dramatic it is good that krishna gave arjuna only material eyes but not material mind or the divine eyes but he did not give divine mind had he given the divine mind arjuna would be completely in the in a sakya rasa with the universal form <laughs> he did you know dance and played with the universal form and there ends the bhagavad gita <laughs> and all our gita book distribution everything ends okay <clears throat> so there is a distinct difference between these two uh, things as we go in as in the next three four chapters because this subject matter of universal form description of the spiritual universal universal form material universal form it at least goes on three four places in the entire second second canto bhagavatam three four places so we'll observe this uh, where the spiritual middle form is described uh, or the, uh, the universal form has been described where the material universal form has been described that we'll try to see as we go further but for now we should know that uh, though it is the vibhuti it is a manifestation of the maya shakti of the lord manifestation of the maya shakti of the lord but still what is been described here is that this maya shakti's manifestation is ascribed to purusha the spiritual universal form the ultimately whether i do or my energy does sometimes somebody may say energy did sometimes i did isn't it so energy maya is uh, the instrument and the person is the supreme lord a person is the ultimate cause and maya is the instrumental cause instrumental cause and the pradana is the upadana karana what do you call upadana karana in english uh, no no uh yeah anyhow uh, <laughs> when i get the name uh, mm, efficient cause <laughs> so efficient cause is say or, or some some cause it comes i'll i'll, I'll talk about later i'm not getting these getting the missed words like uh, there are three causes for this universes that that we know from the very first verse of bhagavatam itself that is janma adyasyato anvaya ditarah itaratah artesh vigna swarat one is a prime cause or the supreme cause the remote cause you may say the remote cause uh, other one is known as the instrumental cause through what the remote cause does is the instrumental cause and uh, maya and time they take these forms of being the instrumental cause 
and ultimately there is upadana karana maya has one aspect called pradana from there all the ingredients for the creation of this world comes isn't it so our acharyas have clearly described krishna is all the three causes krishna is all the three causes uh, he is uh, the uh, sarva karana or the or the the source of everything number 2 he is the upadana karana hmm. and is also the nimitta karana nimitta karana means nimitta means instrumental uh, ultimate cause is krishna mula karana and then is instrumental that is the nimitta third one is upadana pradana is upadana karana in this way uh, we should know that even though the maya is doing manifesting this ultimately maya belongs to krishna that is why the spiritual universal form manifesting this world has been described here okay go further it is said that his mouth is the generating center of all kinds of voices and its controlling deity is the fire demigod and his skin and other let us see one thing now as much as we have two things here uh, one is uh, the the sense the sense organ and the sense instrument Uh, like to give you a small example does a cow have a hand so what do you do with the hand when i give something what do you do with the hand you take isn't it what do you when you give grass to the cow what does it do does it have a hand yeah it has a hand otherwise how will it take it is using the mouth for taking so the taking potency the taking potency is there in the cow <clears throat> can the blind man see yes. now you got it <laughs> <laughs> now you got it so the eye is different from the eyeball the eye is different from the eyeball so when that is what is the difference between the vedic physics sankhya and uh, the physics what you all studied in so gross that is why the children the, you know, they brought uh, this is my eyes this is my nose wrong actually this is not my eyes <laughs> this eyeball it is the eyeball this is not my nose huh? this only the nose instrument eyeball is the eye instrument eye is different uh, eye is subtle the senses are in the mind so that is why manaschayam indriyani manaschayam vishayanupasevate isn't it so you, uh, when somebody dies utkramantam satam vaapi bunjanam va gunanvitam विमूढ़ानुपश्यति पश्यति ज्ञानचक्षुषा सो इफ ज्ञानचक्षुषा पर्सन हु हैज गॉट नॉलेज यू कैन सी दैट व्हाट इज देयर इन द बॉडी देयर ओनली इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स ऑफ द सेंसेस बट द सेंसेस हैव गॉन अलोंग विद द सटल बॉडी विद द माइंड एवरीथिंग सेंसेस हैव गॉन सो देयर इज अ डिस्टिंक्शन बिटवीन देम इन द सेम वे द यूनिवर्सल फॉर्म आल्सो देयर इज अ डिस्टिंक्शन बिटवीन द सेंस एंड द sense instrument object is different any of that we all know so there are two things here we should understand that we cannot get into that go further and his skin and other six layers of bodily construction are the representative generating generating centers of the seven kinds of vedic hymns like the gayatri 
Gayatri is the beginning of all Vedic mantras and it is explained in the first volume of Srimad Bhagavatam. Since the generating centers are the different parts of the universal form of the Lord and since the form of the Lord is transcendental to the material creation, it is to be understood that the voice, the tongue, the skin, etc. suggest that the Lord is his transcendental form is not without them. The material voice or the energy of taking in foodstuff is generated originally from the Lord. Such actions are but perverted reflections of the original reservoirs. The transcendental situation is not without spiritual variegatedness. In the spiritual world, all the perverted forms of the material variegatedness are fully represented in their original spiritual identity. The only difference is that material activities are contaminated by the three modes of material nature, whereas the potencies in the spiritual world are all pure because they are engaged in the unalloyed transcendental loving service of the Lord. In the spiritual world, the Lord is a sublime enjoyer of everything and the living entities there are all engaged in His transcendental loving service without any contamination of the modes of material nature. The activities in the spiritual world are without any of the inebrieties of material world. But there is no question of impersonal voidness on the spiritual platform as suggested by the impersonalists. Devotional service is defined in the Narada Pancharatra as follows. Sarvopadhi vinirmuktam tatparatvena nirmalam rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchyate Originally, since all the senses are produced of the Lord's reservoir of senses, the sensual activities of the material world are to be purified by the process of devotional service. And thus, the perfection of life can be attained simply by purifying the present position of our material activities. And the purifying process begins from the stage of being liberated from the conception of different designations. Every living entity is engaged in some sort of service either for the self or for the family or for the society, country, etc. But unfortunately, all such services are rendered due to material attachment. The attachments of the material affinity may be simply changed to the service of the Lord and thus the treatment of being freed from the material attachment begins automatically. The process of liberation is therefore easier through devotional service than by any other methods. For in the Bhagavad Gita 12.5, it is said that one is subjected to various kinds of tribulations if one is impersonally attached. Klesho dhikraste sham abhyakta sakta chetasa. Okay. So if you go to the verse, just co concentrate on the, me, the words of the words, that is, vacham vahneer. Vacham means what? Vahnir Mukham Kshetram Chandasam Saptadhatavaha. Now, Saptadhatavaha means seven dhatus. What are the seven dhatus? Skin, then Mamsa, Maji, like that. Last one is Virya. There are seven dhatus. So, the Lord's universal form, seven dhatus. From the seven dhatus, what did, what did come out? The seven meters. Mm -hmm. From the mouth of the universal form, what, did come out, what came out? Speech. Speech came out. And the speech organ came out. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then Havya. Havya means? Huh? Offerings. What you offer in the Agni is called Havya to the demigods. Havya. So, uh, what did, where did the Havya come from? Kind of the words. It came from the the tongue of the universal form. Uh, 
So three organs of the universal form are described here. Number one is ma mouth and then seven dhatus and then the tongue. From the tongue, what did come out? What came out of the tongue? Havya. Kavyamrita. What is the difference between Havya and Kavya? Havya is something which is offered to the, the demigods, the devatas. Kavya is something which is offered to the pitris. And then, when you are offered it, that becomes prasad. And that prasad becomes food for the, for all of us. Isn't it? Uh, that is why, Amrita Nanam Jivha Sarva Rasasya Cha. From that comes Sarva Rasasya Cha. Sarva Rasa. Mm -hmm. All the taste come. Okay. Next verse. Sarva sunam cha vyayos cha vayos cha tamna se paramayane ashvino raushadhi nam cha dhano mhoda pramodayo. So, tan nase, nase means what? Nose. Hmm? What came out? What came out? Sarvasunam. Asun means what? Life hair. Where do you hear the word asun? Ah. Anybody can tell what is the meaning of gatasun and agatasun? Gata means gone. Asun means life hair. The thing from which the life hair has gone away. What is that thing? Gross body. Agatasun means the thing from which life hair has not gone. What is that? Settled body. Settled body. So, in that verse, Nanu Soshanti Pandita, in that verse, Gatasun and Agatasun means grass bottle and settled body. Where Krishna tells Arjuna, what does he say? Asochan anvasochastum pragyamadam shabhashase gatasun agatasun scha nanu shochanti pandita. So a learned person doesn't bother about these two things. What, about, what are the two things? Grass body and settled body. Isn't it? He's only bothered about the soul. Huh? But we are exactly bothered about our grass body and subtle body. <laughs> After being so learned. <laughs> and we give lectures to <laughs> So how nicely that verse applies to us, Jesse. <laughs> so <clears throat> the heirs were born. Interesting if you see, in the first verse, what manifested was Agni. Isn't it? Huh? How mouth has got to do with Agni? How mouth has got to do with Agni? Why Agni is mentioned first? Why not others? How many of you know the first mantra of Rig Veda? Agni Mile Puru Hitam Yakyasadevam Ratvijam. First verse. First mantra of Rigveda is Agni. Why? Because it is through Agni you offer the oblations. Without fire, you can no sacrifice. And no sacrifice, you cannot be any human being. So Agni. First demigod who has been who has been uh, described and glorified, worshipped in the Veda is Agni. So that is why the first manifestation of Agni has happened. And then, what do you offer in Agni? Havyaha and Kavaya. And to offer them, you require what? Mantra. Chandasam. 
So these descriptions, they have a logic behind it. They have a big science behind it. Just to give you some idea of why it is so. Now comes the smell. So this smell, the smelling place of the Lord, what happened? The life airs came. The vayu. So vayu doesn't mean just this air, which is there. No, I want air. Put the fan. Vayu has come. Hanuman Krupa is there. Something like that. <laughs> this vayu and Hanuman were different. <laughs> vayu is the Hanuman. His mukhya prana. What has been described is asun mukhya prana. This air is different from the air which we talk. Why put Hanuman ki jai? So that why you, Hanuman why is different. When you breathe in air, in the air there is prana. In the food there is prana. And what leaves the body, what leaves the body at the time of death? Prana. Prana chala gya. It's ki atma chala gya. Nobody talks like that. You should not say atma chala gya. Of course, initially we say, you know, the soul has left the body and all. Actually, it is not the soul leaving the body. <laughs> it is what, what leaves the body is the pranas. The pranas go away. So that has been described. Why? Because to do any activity, you require prana. Without prana, you cannot do any activity. Uh, you can see without eye. You can lift without hands. You can walk without legs. But without prana you cannot do anything uh, that is why pranas have been described in the Vedic literatures as good as Paramatma he is just sitting next to Paramatma the, the Paramatma which you can realize or anybody can realize with, with some intelligence is, is none other than Vayu, Mukhya Prana Hanuman, so he is not the ordinary person, Hanuman, Bhima the same person came as Madhva you know, I can talk a lot about it, but I, <laughs> then you'll say, you know, you're, you're disguised, uh, Madhva disguised in a Gaudi Vaishnavism. <laughs> so, <laughs> the GBC will tell, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> okay. Tanna se uh, paramayane and paramayane um, Ashvinor aushadinam cha granho modha paramo, para, paramo dayaha So Ashwini Kumaras hmm, they all came from the fragments and uh, comes from the Ashwini aushadinam cha granho Tan nase grahano. Go to the word to word meaning and see what is the difference. Nase means what? And grahano means what? What is the meaning of nase? Huh? Nose. And then? Grahana. So you got it, what I told? Difference? You, so the, as much as you have the sense organ and the sense instrument, the same as Supreme Lord also, in the universal form, these two have been really uh, categorized separately. So from the uh, place of smelling, from the nose, third nose, who came why you came. And from Grana, the smelling power, uh, organ of smell, who came? Dashyukumaras came. And all the different smelling, uh, uh, different smells, perfumes, whatever you have. Uh, these days people say, uh, no, smell scent, we'll put some scent and go. But that scent is not scent, it, is, it becomes mixed with the uh, <laughs> with your sweat and become so horrible. <laughs> People put some scent in the gopi chandan and sell. That is Rajasik, you should not put. Very dangerous. Uh, you buy the gopi chandan from the stall, you'll find. Very nice smell, no? <laughs> gopi chandan is not for smelling, it's for applying. <laughs> <laughs> 
So if you know Sankhya, you will become a fault finder. So better not know. <laughs> many a times we do so many things. Huh? Somebody came and told me, Prabhuji, this garland no? is so beautiful. No? Lord is looking so beautiful with this garland. Huh? What a beautiful garland. I told, garland is made up of what? Flowers. Is a flowers for beauty or is flowers for smell? You are confused. Kya hai, Prabhuji? <laughs> it is because you don't read Bhakti Rasamra Sindhu. In Bhakti Rasamra Sindhu, what is mentioned? Only fragrant flowers should be offered to Krishna. Not beautiful flowers. <laughs> so if you know, then you will not bring all the Videshi flowers in the festivals. When I go there, I see all. One devotee says, Prabhuji, if you put these flowers now, three days you don't have to change. Oh, no temple commander is here. <laughs> He'll get frustrated. <laughs> I, I speak out loudly. What, what to Jada Buddhi? Because they're eating some things like that, which are so stale. That is where mind also becomes very gross. Uh, these things cannot be understood. Flowers are called sumana, means which makes your mind very beautiful because of their fragrance. Flowers is not for seeing beautiful. It is not for the beauty. It is the fragrance. <laughs> now, they have removed the fragrance out of the flower, flower. Even if you put a rose inside your nose, you'll not. <laughs> you don't get the fragrance. <laughs> Maximum what fragrance you can get is it get rotten. <laughs> <laughs> so, then another thing, okay, forget, forget about it. What did you say? I told you. But the Lord is looking, looking so beautiful with this uh, garland. How can you, you make the Lord beautiful by your garland? Do you think this garland will make the Lord beautiful? Then I told him one story. That uh, once in the Udipi Matha, one lady went and had darshan. She's a rich lady, Shetty. And she saw the Lord was naked. Means undressed like this, standing. With only the rod, churning rod and the rope. Then went and she went and met the Swamiji. They sponsored something. She told Swamiji, I hope you don't have much of Alankara. Means don't have any, many <coughs> for Shingar the deity, you don't have much. So I'm going to offer all my gold, all my this thing, please. He accepted, Swamiji accepted. Next day came, still the Lord is standing like that only. <laughs> Again she went and you did not offer. You want more or what to do? <laughs> then the Swami told, in my two years of my Pariyaya, I have taken a vow that I don't want to make the Lord look ugly because of my decoration. He is beautiful and he should be as he, as he is. <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> on the name of making him beauty, who am I to make the Lord more beautiful? He is already beautiful. Uh, so in this <laughs> two years it not drew any dressing. That was his bhav. <laughs> If I would have done it, maybe I'm lazy. <laughs> but he was not like that. His consciousness is much more, much more elevated. <clears throat> so everything what you see, I'm just telling all this thing because Krishna has created this nature. And we interfere with this nature or try to go away from nature. Then you are going away from Krishna. That is the problem. So why this understanding of Sankhya is important is because Sankhya is... A, the physics and chemistry created by Krishna. So that is why this science has to be taught. This is actually to be taught on the name of physics and chemistry. What are you dealing with physics and chemistry? Chemicals, isn't it? Uh, and other physical aspects of, th of this world. So if you don't know Yadadishthanam and how Lord is Dadishtha, and it is from the Lord everything got created, and how it has got created. How this world is created is actually physics and chemistry. Physics is the, the, the physical aspect of it. The result is chemistry, chemical aspect of it. So that is why Sankhya is very interesting. Uh, many times, many devotees, they just uh, neglect this part, thinking, you know, the same thing. Let, the, let us go to the stories. Uh, because the next chapter is a lot of stories, different, uh, the Lord, different incarnations. One, one, one verse, one story. Uh, one verse, one story. It's so interesting. 
so maya krishna's past times krishna's past times with maya is very important to know why why it is important to know because if you want to get out of maya this is the only way that is you can you can uh, get out of maya that is to he- hear about krishna past times with maya so go to the last verse of the fifth, seventh chapter if you can memorize it will be very nice somebody can read it very beautiful words last verse of the seventh chapter మాయాం వర్ణయతో ముష ఈశ్వర ఈశ్వరస్యానుమోది శృణ్వత శ్రద్ధయా నిత్యం మాయాత్మానమూయతి ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ ద లార్డ్స్ యాక్టివిటీస్ ఇన్ దిన్ అసోసియేషన్ విత్ హిస్ డిఫరెంట్ ఎనర్జీస్ షుడ్ బి డిస్క్రైబ్డ్ అప్రిషియేటెడ్ అండ్ హర్డ్ ఇన్ అకార్డెన్స్ విత్ ద టీచింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ సుప్రీం లార్డ్ టీచింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ ద సుప్రీం లార్డ్ if this is done regularly with devotion and respect one is sure to get out of this illusory energy of the lord uh-huh. so krishna's past time with smell of this world krishna's past time with the the taste what you have in this world uh, krishna's past time with the sun rays the krishna's past time with the air uh, vayu prana vayu and uh, krishna's past time with the earth krishna's past time with the marble krishna's past time with the fan the projector the if you hear this how <coughs> certain conditions are there ha uh, ishwarasya anumodita number 1 how as described by krishna in the bhagavatam number 1 not by the asurik sankhya number 2 <coughs> shunnataha shraddhaya number 3 nityam if you hear what maya mayam varnayato mushya if you hear about the descriptions of maya as described by krishna with faith in the association of devotees constantly then maya atma namuhyati maya by the illusory energy atma we living entities the conditioned souls namuhyati may devotees actually we all know this we all experience this for till 9 o'clock there is no problem all problem starts after that only because uh, morning you are there in the mangalarti chanting and dancing and after that you are chanting uh, hare krishna maha mantra maybe sleeping also we don't know and then you have bhagavatam class deities guru puja deities there is no problem and after 9 o'clock after bhagavatam class all problems start because that is the time you have meetings and all these things you you see other things so if you want to be krishna conscious after 9 o'clock this is what a place because there you are directly in touch with the spiritual energy of the lord and after 9 o'clock after your prasadam then you are in touch with somebody goes to the accounts department somebody wants to make life member somebody wants to go for that somebody is dealing with the congregation somebody is dealing with this somebody is dealing with the construction what is all this you are dealing with what the material energy of krishna so if you are not able to see krishna's connection with matter then we are connected to matter and if you are not able to see krishna's connected with matter then what happen you're caught up you're caught up so if you are 24 hours in engrass in chanting reading bhagavatam and all these things fine uh, then but we are not in that stage even though you have come to the stage because you are in the preaching mission naturally you have to be you are you are you are bound in, in our organization you are bound to be somewhere dealing with matter uh, to some extent 
especially when you become a senior devotee. When you are new, fine, very good. All problems come after five, ten years in the movement because you become, you're senior now. You have to show that you have done so many projects, you have done so much preaching and expectation is more. So at that time, if this is not in our consciousness, how we are connected to, how matter is connected to Krishna, very difficult to deal. There will be a shock. So you should be very careful. I just wanted to mention this verse because this verse becomes the, the basis of the entire fifth Sixth and seventh chapter. <coughs> because it's the last verse of the seventh chapter. Last verse of the Brahma Narda Samvad. And last verse is actually the essence. Hmm? Puranavati is the essence. The last verse contains everything what is to be told. Like Bhagavad Gita. Last verse. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna to Dhanurdana Tatra Shir Vijayo Hutir Dhruva Nitir Matir Mama What a, what a verse to see. The most important verse is that verse. Uh, the effect of Gita Shravan wherever Krishna is there means Bhagavad Gita is there. Wherever Arjuna is there that means wherever devotees are there hearing Bhagavad Gita what is the effect? All material and spiritual opulence, everything is there. Whatever you can understand, whatever you want, everything is there. Uh, what is the last verse of Bhagavatam? Nama Sankirtanam Yasya Sarvapapa Nashna Ramo Dukkha Shamanam Tam Pranamami Hari Param In the first verse of Bhagavatam, is there any mention of Krishna's name? Lot of scope for Mayavadis. Just see Bhagavatam, you say Krishna. First verse doesn't even talk about Krishna. Name is not mentioned. What is mentioned then? Last line, last two words. Satyam Param. Then you have to say him. If first verse, something is not mentioned, somewhere it will be mentioned. Where is it mentioned? Last verse. Satyam Param, last, last verse, what becomes? Hari Param. Then who is that Satya? Hari. Isn't it? So just see. Uh, that is the potential of the last words. And we don't <laughs> remember the last words. Because whatever is there in the entire Mahagatam, last. Like in our programs, people, what do they remember? Lecture or Prasad? <laughs> That is why Vracharya says, Madhuri <laughs> na Give some sweet at the end. <laughs> Give some sweet. Whatever they have done, what they have not forgotten, not forgotten. Ah, kya, 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 What they heard, who remembers? <laughs> Nothing. So that, uh, sweet, what is that? So in this way, uh, we should know, Maya Atma Namuhyati, Namuhyati, you will not be bewildered by Maya, yeah. by Maya, uh, you will not be bewildered. Why? Because you are heard, Shrinvataha, Shraddhaya, Nityam, uh, um, among the association devotees. Uh, okay? So it is 121 now, uh, we will do tomorrow, I think. The class was from 11 to one, I came, I was supposed to come late, I came early, I don't know. <laughs> Tire got punctured and, and uh, I thought, I come, that is why I told I'll come one hour late. But exactly reached at 11 o'clock here. Of course, it could give them some time for me to understand. So we stop here, uh, we'll go much faster tomorrow because I, one class is required to really come out of the slumber so many. When did you have the last session of uh, Bhakti Vaibhav? Yeah, that also is not known. <laughs> we are so too transcendental to time. <laughs> huh? Yeah, you ask question. Start. Regarding this life airs you are mentioning, 
yeah so when the uh, soul leaves the body so first whether life heirs leave or whether the soul first leaves and who follows whom okay i'll ask another question huh. what do you mean by leaving or going we are getting the body we can okay i say prabhu what is your name kaustub das kaustub das wa kaustub das went to sleep what does it mean <laughs> state Actually, of consciousness <laughs> these classes are crazy i'm telling you <laughs> <laughs> so in philosophy the terminology is what we use it it doesn't mean the same what we what it means in the literature isn't it so when we say the soul leaves the body it is only to say actually what leaves is the pranas <clears throat> so to give you a, for example we say uh, the soul is in the body uh, now uh, you came from your ashram so we are staying in the first floor it's a third floor you came to the uh, first floor here so did the soul come from the third floor to the first floor if that is the case then kootastam achalam dhruvam sanyemendri gramam not what is it? not not that was second chapter kootasta achaloyam sanatanah achaloyam sanatanah and achala how did how is this word achala then isn't it so we just cannot take one one sentence somewhere and just the soul is achala kutasta it is fixed immovable it is fixed and immovable and how can it go then real question of going all the movements are by the air so it is the movements are by the air so what moves is the air and what moves is the air when i say moves it has got two meanings when i say what moves is the air means what moves is actually the air and what moves other things in this world is also air uh, like you are able to birds are moving and i am lifting my hand it is not because of the muscles and the bones and it is not because it is because of the airs uh, so uh, heart attack it is not because of cholesterol it is not it is a big it is because of your vata why why heart attacks only happen in the morning Well, if you see morning three o'clock till six o'clock seven, that is the time maximum heart attacks happen. Why? It is a water yoga. It is nothing to do with cholesterol. So, uh, so it's it's a prana vay vayus. So our subject matter at present is not the soul, but our <clears throat> literary understanding or the philosophical uh, descriptions about the soul should not be literary. that is why after describing about the soul in practically how many 20 verses in that krishna at the end he says ascharyavat paschati kaschideinam ascharyavat paschati tateva chanyah ascharyavat chainam anyah shunoti shutva apyainam vedata chaiva kaschid so the soul is amazing ascharyavat paschati paschati means what the see some see paschati the soul as amazing ascharyavat the see the, the soul as amazing if you use the word the the but to the subject here or the the subject some see the soul in an amazing way so one who sees the soul as amazing is a devotee one who sees the soul with amazement means he is bewildered so shila baladev vidya bhushan ru says if you want to see the soul as amazing and without amazement 
you should hear about the soul from the spiritual master again and again and again. Then, Divya Gyan Hride Prakashit. It is not something to be read and understood. Okay? So this much we can discuss for your question. Okay, we stop here. I have taken more time. Hare Krishna.